If you've bought one of our GSM alarm systems, what you'll receive is two boxes. Um, the first box will receive will contain the control panel, and two of the sensors, the remotes, um, and then the second box that you'll receive will have the two driveway sensors like that. Inside that box, there will be batteries for the the sensors. Um, some people have actually thrown that cardboard out without realising that the batteries are in there, so do be careful. Okay, the box contents itself. There is a small book of instructions that comes with it. Um, it's a not very good translation from Chinese, so you will have a set of rewritten instructions that are slightly more intelligible, and um, it should help you with the setting up. When you receive the alarm, all of the zones should be configured to sensors that, that you receive with it. Um, so what you'll have is two remote controls, the control panel itself, this is the little aerial that goes on the control panel, a PIR sensor with the battery included, a magnetic door sensor, again with the battery included, and some sticky pads to attach it to door posts, etc. This is a little connection lead that will connect that kind of battery to the control panel for test purposes. I'll come to that in a moment. And then you've got a small packet there which has got some spare jumper links and also a small screw which secures the top of the, the PIR sensor. Um, you probably won't need the jumper links. Um, it does explain in the instruction manual what those are for, but you shouldn't need them. So that's what's included in the box. It's quite easy to check for yourself if you want to that the, these are all configured to the alarm panel. Um, and what I normally do is use, as I said, the battery with one of these test leads on it. It's just more convenient because it means you can walk around with the control panel when you're not tied to within a, you know, three feet of a power socket or whatever. So if you just plug that into the power socket onto the top of the panel there, that will power the unit quite happily. Okay, it's beeping now. It's, it's beeping because it's looking for a SIM card, um, but that's, that is in standby mode, um, which is also the test mode. So if you want to check that the, the sensors are configured, you just operate each one in turn. So this one, the magnetic sensor, that's flashing zone one. So that's configured to zone one. PIR sensor, if I turn that on, that's configured to zone 2, you saw the light flash in there. Remote controls, you just act you can activate any button on there, so just press the button. That was the disarm button, so it's pressed it's beeping twice to tell me it's disarmed. And again with that one. So that tells you the two remotes and those two zones are actually paired up to the, the control panel. Now you will also receive the, the solar powered driveway sensors which are those. Now obviously these are stripped down and I've put the batteries in them. Um, it's easier to set them up before you actually install them in the location where they're going because it's, um, you know, you haven't got to faff about walking between them and doing all that. So um, just to test that those are working, as I said, the batteries are in there sort of facing each other. You just put something between them to block the beams and you'll see that zone three light is flashing there. So those solar powered sensors are configured to zone three. Okay, so that's how you will receive it. Um, you should also have a piece of paper like that in the box, which actually tells you which zone each sensor is configured to, just so that for your information, um, you'll see easily enough on the control panel anyway, but that will be in there. Okay, I'll just unplug that. Let me move that away. So, if for any reason you need to either reset the control panel or pair some additional sensors up. I'll just go through the routine of how to do that quite easily. I've got a spare panel here. So what I'll do is, is reset this back to the, the factory mode that it would have come out originally at. Um, now what you do to do that, on the top here, there's two buttons, there's an on off switch there. Leave that one in the off position for now until we're ready to set the alarm up fully with the SIM card in. This is the set button here. You've got the SIM card slot there, little connector block for wired zones and for the, the siren. 
and then that's your, your power connector there. Okay, so to reset the panel, which deletes all of the zones on there, what you do is hold down that set button, press it down, and connect your power supply. You'll get a long beep and all the lights will light up. That means that that panel is now back to factory setting. Um, so there's, there's nothing paired up or connected to it at all. So now that the panel is reset to, to the factory mode, um, we can go into the, the pairing setup. Okay. So to pair the units up, press the set button down, hold it you get a long beep. That's puts in the setting mode. If you press that button again, all of the lights light up. That means it's in the learning mode for the remote control. So if I press any button on a remote control, that will light it up. That will match it with the control panel. Press the set button again, all the lights come up. That's remote learning mode again. So on the other remote control, press any button. Those are now paired with the panel. If we press the set button again, go past the remote learning zone, so press the set button again, that goes to zone 1. Now what we want to do is configure one of these sensors to zone 1. So if I operate this one first, that tells me that that is now configured to zone 1. So press the set button again, and again, and again to zone to zone 2. That means that one is now configured to zone 2. We press it again, and again, and again, and again to zone 3. Activate the other sensors. Those are now compared to, those are now paired to zone 3. So if you just want to test those, if you come out of that setting mode now, so press the set button down and hold it until you get that long beep and it will go back to just the power light flashing. Now what you can do is activate each remote and sensor in turn just to check that it actually registers on the panel. So if I press the button on the remote, that's gone into arm mode, disarm, and on the other one, arm mode and disarm. Okay, if I activate this sensor, that's, that's paired to zone one, you saw the light flash there. If I activate this sensor, that's paired to zone two. And if I activate these, those are paired to zone three. So that's how you compare the, the sensors to the zone. Hopefully you won't have to do that. It is done before the alarm panel is sent out to you, um, which should save you a little job. Once you're ready to install your sensors um, and do the walk test, you'll find it's easier um, to set all your sensors up in the location where they've got to go. Um, obviously the important thing is that when you install the, the driveway sensors that they are lined up correctly. I won't go into too much detail on that because it is dealt with on another video but it is quite critical that those are lined up correctly. Um, with the magnetic doorway sensors um, it's better if they're mounted that way round so that the, the magnetic strip itself is on the same side as the where the little LED lights are. Um, it will work either side, theoretically, but the reason I say it's better to put it on the side where the LEDs are is because that's where the, the little magnetic strip is located. So it, pay, it makes sense to put the magnet quite close to it. Okay, that's the inside of the, the magnetic door sensor. The battery is installed down there. There is an extendable aerial, but these, quite, 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 these have got quite a good range, so um, you probably won't have to pull that out. Okay, so that's, that's where the battery goes in there, and that's the way around you install that. Um, when you're ready to do the walk test, I find it easier to use the, the battery lead plugged into the panel. It means you can walk around with it. It's particularly useful with the driveway sensors because um, it may be some distance from the house if you've got a long drive. You may not have somebody to help you, so plugging the battery into the control panel means you can carry it around with you and do the walk test yourself, and you can see straight away whether it's working or not. 
Um, so just that's a little tip to help you out with that.